My mother's blue lady sat in the bed in front of me. I looked into its eyes, and it felt as if she returned the inquiring stare. While it's maintaining her soft, enticing half-smile and beautiful, alluring gaze. My thoughts returned to my dear mother, who had recently passed away, and whose last contribution to this world was the painting of the Blue Lady. Something caught my eye. I returned my focus to the inheritance, the Blue Lady on the bed. Did her smile just grow ever so slightly? I bent over for closer inspection, my face directly eye-level with hers. I know not of the compulsion behind my mother's desire to paint this, nor what she was trying to express, but alas, here it is, staring me in the eye, drawing me ever closer. It was too late when I realized something was wrong. I pulled my face away from the painting just as her eyes sharpened and grew stern. It was impossible, however. Where I expected to see my own room, I saw her face, only her face, nothing but her face. No matter which direction I pointed my eyes at, and even though I still felt the physical world around me, my senses dulled and grew fainter and fainter, while my fear mounted to a level I'd never seen it reach before, I felt myself fall backwards, and eventually the blue lady faded into blackness. There was never a definitive moment of awakening, just a thrusting of my awareness into a large room, filled with chairs all facing one way, facing towards a large white wall. On the chair fourth from the right at the first row of chairs sat a woman with a posture I was familiar with. I rushed towards her, running around the chairs and stood before my mother, where she sat, black-eyed and vacant, staring at the white wall. Mom? My mind formed the words, and my mouth and tongue didn't move, and no sound formed. She seemed to hear me anyway. Her emotionless expression directed its gaze at me and told me to leave. I asked her how. The color flourished to her cheeks, and her gaze gained the sense of awareness. She continued staring at me briefly, before her eyes tightened and her tears welled up. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. She took my life. Now it seems like she's taken yours. At that instant, the last words escaped her lips. She vanished and the room gained a blue hue to it. I turned around to find the white wall had been replaced with the blue lady. She was smiling from cheek to cheek. I stared at her for a few moments, then I realized she was pulling me in. I broke the gaze and turned to rush back for the room, or the exit I hoped to find, but it was nowhere to be found. I screamed to silence as I desperately searched, but to no avail. I turned to look at the blue lady. She had enveloped the first row of chairs. She was now coming for me. I grabbed the closest chair and flung it at her face. It exploded into what I can only describe as anger. As the room changed from blue to red, the lady's face contorted into an incomprehensible rage. The wall moved fast towards me. Her eyes was now black with rage. The silent screams did nothing as she developed my full vision and my silent screams did nothing as she enveloped my full vision. And she was all I could see. The blue lady screamed and laughed maniacally. What seemed like thousands upon thousands of suffering dead people begging for contrition and screeching in torment repeating of itself. And I lost all sense of myself in the physical world. There was only her, and ever only her. I wished for death at that moment. And while the visual upsetly of her mutilated voice contorted evermore with rage, I heard the most beautiful, soft, chilling voice. It would be the only time I would ever hear her speak. You are dead already. Your soul is mine. Where did it come from? It was painted by one DJ Duke just four years ago, as the initial down the bottom right would suggest. And it comes as a donation from the family Duke itself. Duke? As in the same family with all of those deaths? Yes, the very same. 
The reason of its display in our museum is its connection with said deaths, as it would seem that starting with the original artist's deaths, each family member which inherited the piece was mysteriously found dead at one time or another, and of unexplained causes after obtaining it. But surely that in itself doesn't make it for being so significant to be shown in the museum, does it? You would be correct, sir, if that were all there was to it. But what really gives significance to the piece is that in all 21 of the recent cases of death in the Duke family, it was found in the immediate vicinity of the corpse, giving it the chilling but absurd reputation of having actually caused the deaths. Nevertheless, the urban legend of this painting is what gives it its value. The man nodded in understanding as the tour guide suggested that the group move on. As the others walked past, he stood for a moment staring at the blue lady. He could not help but notice something sinister in her soft enticing half-smile and beautiful alluring gaze. After a moment, he turned to join the group, but as he took a step, he stopped and did a double take. He looked back at the blue lady and he could have sworn that her smile had grown ever so slightly.